We have an exciting show tonight. We've got a PR expert, which is something that every small business needs help with. Uh, so stay tuned and you can ask Ryan Evans from Bite Size PR your questions. Thanks everyone for joining me tonight. This is episode 57 of the Small Businesses Do It Better show. I am your host, Carissa Dunphy. And in just a moment, we're gonna be talking with Ryan Evans of Bite Size PR and Lift Marketing. Uh, Bite Size PR is a PR company that specializes in press public relations for small businesses. So I'm excited to be able to have him available for you guys to ask your questions to. Um, tonight, I want to tell you about our sponsors of the show, which is Ovali TV. Ovali.tv hosts and produces live video events for your upcoming promotion, interview, conference, or whatever you want to market. Visit Ovali.tv to request a free 30 minute consultation to find out more about going live with your brand. And by Dunn and Bradstreet Credibility Corp. Small Businesses Do It Better is working with Dunn and Bradstreet Credibility Corp to make sure small businesses know about their business credit file. Credit Signal is the first and only product on the market to provide companies with free access to changes to their DNB credit scores and ratings. Get more information and your free business credit report at smallbusinessesdoitbetter.com slash credit. And I want to tell you guys about a show that I was interviewed on yesterday. It was kind of rare for me to be the one being interviewed. Uh, but I chatted with uh, John Wren, who is, uh, I guess he's like the head of the guy over at the Small Business Chamber of Commerce. And his show is called The Startup Show. So we talked about um, how my show got started and all sorts of other fun things. So you can see there is a screenshot. You can watch the interview at T Radio V. Uh, I think it's dot com. And um, it was really exciting because uh, he was joined by Russell from the U.S. Veterans Chamber of Commerce. So I felt very privileged and lucky uh, to talk to someone from such esteemed, I guess, organizations that so many people can relate to on a daily basis. Uh, I'll put this uh, link to that in the show notes, too. So if you want to talk uh, about your startup story, contact John at the Small Business Chamber of Commerce or the con commerce i said converse like the shoe <laughs> small business chamber of commerce the startup show i'll have the links in the show notes tomorrow um, but he's in denver i was his first skype interview so they do do skype but if you're in colorado um, he loves to have people in the studio because he is a radio show also so you can be on skype like i was um, but also live on the radio which is super cool um so that's neat uh, we're going to start talking with Ryan in just a second. I want to tell everybody, though, if you're in the chat room, don't hold back on your questions. Public relations, press, marketing is essential to small business success. So ask your questions for Ryan while we have him on the show. We want to get everything out of him that we can. And um, this is your opportunity. So whatever you want to know, get ready to ask him. So uh, let's welcome ryan evans to the show thanks thank for joining so me tonight ryan thank you so much for having me um for those of you who don't know who you are um tell us a little bit about yourself and your business sure so i'm the founder of bite size pr and we also have a marketing company called lift marketing uh okay. where we do social media marketing and manage ad campaigns and do stuff like that so uh, Bite Size PR is, is focused on getting PR for small businesses in a, in a way that's affordable, which is, is uh, pretty unique, actually. Definitely. Well, when I was, um, I actually did a lot of research on what small businesses struggle with and what they need help with, where their trouble areas are. And the one that came up most often was PR, getting pressed, getting traction, getting their name out there. Um, and Bite Size PR was kind of all over the place. So you're doing a really good job of press for yourself, I guess. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> uh, so tell us about your business model because it's very different than the traditional PR company. Sure. Yeah. So the, the traditional PR 
in my opinion, hasn't kept up with kind of the evolution of media. So everyone has a blog. Everyone is a media source now, whether that's on Twitter or Facebook. Uh, your show is a great example. You know, so this show wouldn't have been possible, you know, even five or, or ten years ago. Uh, and now there's a proliferation of of great shows like this. So. The traditional PR model is set up more on the old school media uh, channels, which are major newspapers, major radio, major TV, and really the paying a PR firm was kind of a, a gatekeeper to getting access to that. Well, now you really don't want to be in a handful of major media publications. You want to be uh, all across all the smaller ones too, so niche blogs that reach your market, um, smaller shows um, that that talk about things that you're interested in. Those are good channels too. And so we uh, do our best to kind of uh, uh, match make small businesses with something interesting to say uh, with shows that uh, have have a great audience for their business. It's a good tactic because a lot of these um, companies not only are they, not only are they big and kind of cold, I guess. Um, but they don't cater to specifically to small businesses, and it's an entirely different market. I mean, you know, for myself or um, anybody watching, you're not going to want the same press company that, say, Nike has. Absolutely. I mean, and, and honestly, for small businesses, PR, paying a PR firm has been inaccessible. Um, for their model to work, um, they have to charge multi-thousand dollar uh, monthly retainers. And so... If you're a small business, I mean, you're doing everything. You're 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 scraping by as it is, trying to do you know your your books and do your marketing and to hire people. And so, um, paying someone that that kind of money isn't practical for most small small businesses. So that that's one of the reasons that that small businesses typically don't do PR is it just doesn't make sense financially. So if you could offer one tip for small businesses that could sort of almost just instantly help them with getting notice, whether it be a change on their website, make sure they're doing something on a daily basis or, or whatever. What could you choose for one tip that could really help people that most people aren't doing? Yeah, I think the, the first thing to understand is that um, people in the press, reporters, bloggers, journalists, um, they have a job to do. And their job is to tell a story to their audience. And so one of the things that I think a lot of businesses struggle with is that they get so excited about their business, they're all amped up, they're ready to go, and they think everyone's going to share in that excitement. And it, it just it is not the case. <laughs> I mean, most people don't care about your business inherently. So you have to have some interesting angle. And for some businesses, um, it's a little more work than others. You know, So uh, you, what you have to do is come up with a story that makes sense with your product. Um, and that can be a lot of different things. So um, if uh, a friend of mine, for example, sells cupcakes, um, and that's fine, and that's that's interesting, but within that, she has to carve out a, a niche that um, is beyond cupcakes, right? So she has a lot of different um, a lot of different angles in there. She's a, a woman-owned business, so that's an interesting angle. Um, Good angle. Yeah, she sells cupcakes online, so she's doing selling in a unique and innovative way. So that's another angle. Um, she's very uh, influential in, in social media, so that's another angle. And using all those angles um, helps tell the story, helps the reporter, helps the blogger uh, do their job of communicating something interesting. So that's, that's the biggest thing people have a hard time with. And I don't want to take anything away from your services, um, but when small business owners go in these unique angles about themselves, mm -hmm. how do you get a reporter's attention? Somebody that will, will write a story about you. Sure. So uh, there's a, a few different ways. Um, what our service does, how we do it, um, is we actually um, are a somewhat opportunist. So because there's so many media, media outlets out there, there's a explosion of media opportunities. So every day, journalists and bloggers are looking to cover interesting stories. Uh, one thing that we do, and any business can do this, um, is keep an eye out for those interesting stories. So sometimes on, on Twitter, journalists will say, hey, I'm, I'm doing a story on X. You know, I'd love to talk to an expert about, uh, about this, this angle. There's other services out there. Um, Haro, uh, uh, PR Newswire is another one, Reporter Connection is another one. Um, all these different services 
uh, are helping reporters uh, find experts and find interesting people for their stories. So I, I highly recommend um, businesses, you know, using those services and, and just getting a pulse on what's being covered, uh, so that they can they can jump on those those opportunities as they come. Good advice. Um, I have a question in the live chat um, from Jennifer Dono. Um, she's looking at your website, and you have um, eighty nine dollars a month for three pitches. Are these warm leads with people your company has relationships with? Um, so there's there's actually a mixture. Um, so we part of our, our value is that we keep an eye on all these media opportunities that are out there. So what we do is every day our writers go through all the hundreds of, of media opportunities that come in and we take a look at those and what we do is we match them up with our clients. So uh, in the example of, of uh, the cupcake business, uh, we would say if, if someone wants to do a story on cupcakes or if they wanted to do a story on woman owned business or something like that, we would see that angle and actually connect the, uh, the, the press person with our, our client. And, and so that's what we do. And so for our different pricing structures, for the $89 a month, we do that up to three times a month. Gotcha. That's a great answer. Um, I have another question um, from Trisha from DuckCenterRow.com. She uh, recently remodeled their company and they're re working on a website launch. Um, so she wants to know what is a great way for new or old businesses with a revamped model to get PR? If you recommend something like Facebook, print media, and I'm mm -hmm. sure it depends on the business and what they're doing. Absolutely. I mean, again, this this comes from you know the the story that is inherently interesting in your business. Mm -hmm. So um, the first step is just coming up with that story and saying, okay. What would people like to read about? You know, start there, and then once you kind of figure out what you think people would be interested in reading about, then the next step is to say, okay, who is covering that, or where can I find these media opportunities? So one of the ways you can you can leverage is, is something that I I just talked about, and I kind of call that inbound marketing. Um, the other thing that you can do is make a media list of of people who are covering. Uh, uh, stories that are are relevant and um, uh, good fits for your business, and you can build relationships uh, with journalists in a lot of different ways. I mean, one of the simplest uh, and I think most effective ways now is to build relationships with journalists uh, on Twitter, and so follow what they're reading about. Try to help them out when you can. You know, if you, if they write something that you think is interesting, uh, you know, tell them that. If they write something that's controversial, you know, maybe have uh, a comment about it and you know support them help them uh, and and by doing that building those relationships it, it gives you I don't say easy access but it certainly gives you um, a, a spot at the table in terms of pitching your story definitely um, so Aunt Ruby in the chat um, she's saying that your pricing models and structure and business plans are extremely affordable and she wants to know how fast you can work with someone turnover um, like tomorrow, this week, whatever for a press release. Um, so we actually we actually don't write press releases, and I get that question all the time. Uh, uh, we it just doesn't fit our model, um, and so we we don't write press releases. Okay. The other thing I will mention too, and I, I get this a lot too, where people are saying, "I'm doing this launch, you know, tomorrow or three days from now or a week from now, and I want to get press." Um, and there is often, if you're doing a launch, there is an initial um, excitement that you can you can get about your product or service. But I do think it's important for businesses to understand that getting press really is a long-term commitment, and it's it's a long-term process. And you know, getting massive exposure starts with getting small exposure and building over time and getting better and honing your your story and developing your contacts and you know just getting better at doing it. So. Um, so we don't do that particular service, but I, I also want to say that you know when it comes to like these short-term things, think think longer term, think relationships, think honing your your craft of of getting your story out there. Definitely. Um, so I just have a question pop in my head: Is there something that you see that's an absolute no? Do not ever do this when approaching a press a person of the press. Yeah, there, <laughs> there's a million of them. Um, <laughs> One of the things that, that I think every every journalist, every um, blogger hates is cold, 
automated off topic pitches and people do this all the time so um, folks in the press get pitched all the time and what is extraordinarily irritating for them is sifting through dozens of emails a day that are automated meaning you don't address who they are um, that are off topic meaning uh, you're pitching a product that they would never write about um, and and the other thing is is just understanding what they do so if you don't understand what they do or kind of their their uh, area of expertise um, then you're gonna it's gonna come off you know cheap and and sort of you're gonna come off like a like a solicitor you don't you don't want to do that you want to take a warm approach you want to help the reporter you want to help the journalist not you know force them to write about you that's really good advice um, and I know in experience I get a lot of people kind of pitching me as to why they should be on the show sure. and what you said is exactly it there's you need something to stand out you need a story um, because you're gonna be looking through all of these emails Right. And um, it's really, really important. Um, I, yeah, I, I think that the way for people to understand that is that we all, as business owners, uh, get cold emails. I mean, I get multiple mm -hmm. cold emails all you know all day long. And cold emails, in and of themselves, don't necessarily bother me. And by the way, when I mean cold email, just an email from someone that I don't know, um, they don't bother me. What bothers me is is the in when they're wasting my time. So if they're impersonal, don't know what I do, or they're trying to sell me a service that I would never even in a million years buy. Get but your I'm, website to the number one in the search engine. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, yeah, dear sir, madam, you know, uh, we can get you this and that. And that's, you know, it, I don't mind opportunities. Every business owner is seeking opportunities, so I don't mind that, but it's got to be useful. And, and journalists are the same way. Definitely. Very interesting. Okay, so why would you recommend a small business owner go with a company like Bite Size PR as opposed to trying and doing it themselves? What are the benefits? Not sure. just well, your services, I, but I mean, it takes a huge load off, yeah. I imagine. I mean, I, I actually, I think businesses, if they have the, the means and the time and the resources to do it themselves, I think they should do it themselves. Um, you know, uh, we're a nice supplement to that. And for people who don't have the time to do that, we take a lot of the load off, off of, uh, of finding media opportunities. So um, if you were to like source your own media opportunities, one of the, th the advantages that we have, the reason that we can offer it so affordably is that we have scale. Okay, so we are looking at opportunities for other people already. So mm -hmm. adding one more person doesn't take us an additional more amount of time. However, if you were to do it yourself and to scan for media opportunities on social media and in editorial calendars and multiple services and do all that, you may spend you know half the day just tr finding a media opportunity. And and most days you're not going to find anything that's that's good for you. Exactly. So we save a lot of that a lot of that time. The the other thing, and I think this is the case even with myself, is that a lot of people are. Uh, uncomfortable getting the ball rolling with pitching someone. It's uncomfortable to talk about Definitely. Yourself. You know, it, it's the reason most people uh, have terrible bios is because it, it's a little uncomfortable, <laughs> you know, talking about yourself. Um, so we kind of help get that process started. We re make a recommendation of how you can pitch, how you can talk about yourself. And it's not, you know, it's not, rocket science is not super complicated, but there's some best practices to use and, and we help help along with that. Good answer. Um, I have some more really good questions from the live chat about um, your structuring a cold email. Do you recommend um, going to the email, warming up to them, letting them know how um, how you know them and introducing yourself, or do you just go right into it and ask for what you need? Um, I, I, I don't actually, usually, I don't recommend sending just sort of a warm email introducing yourself um, because you're, in a way, you're wasting their time, mm -hmm. right? So um, they don't want to be buddies with you. <laughs> I mean, they 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 want something. They want a story. They want to know something. You know, that's credible. Now, if you were to find ways to help them, you know, before you pitch them, that's great. You know, if you were to point them in the direction of something else, if you were to uh, recommend a few players in your space or talk about you know what's going on in the industry, that that may be okay. But I don't recommend just you know, sending an intro email because mm -hmm. they don't they don't care and they're very busy. 
Um, I, I think that a good place for that is, is Twitter. You know, Twitter is, is a little bit less intrusive. They don't have a uh, feel an obligation or feel guilty if they don't respond to you. Um, so I think you know making a little bit, little inroads on Twitter first is a, is a good way to do that. There's a limited number of characters, so you can't overdo things. Exactly. Um, exactly. And another really good question, Aunt Ruby. I love this question. When using social media, how much is too much versus PR? It it depends on your business. It it depends on on what you're trying to do. I I I, I don't think that there's necessarily anything that you can you can do too much social media necessarily with respect to just you know bothering people or anything like that um, there you can there's certainly diminishing returns on it uh, in terms of you know how much time you spend on it or how much time you can dedicate to doing it versus other critical business tasks but it's more about the avoiding the self-promotional um, you know positioning that a lot of people do that you can definitely do too much of that I mean I, I almost view almost any self-promotion a little bit's okay but but any more than that is you can definitely do too much but in terms of in terms of doing too much social media I, I, I don't really I don't really see that you know as long as you're providing value to the people that are following you or to the people that you're inter interacting with um, I think that's more the, the critical question is 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 what I'm saying adding value to the people that follow me? Am I helping people? Am I, you know, talking to people in a natural and authentic way? You can't really do too much of that. Um, but if I'm pitching my product and just blasting, you know, discounts and sales and and all that kind of stuff, yeah, you can that that gets old really quick. That's very well put. Um, and question from Ducks in a Row. <laughs> I love that name. That's um, great name. How do you measure PR success? I think, again, I, I know this is all very, very kind of custom answers, but or, or, um, the, the success depends on what you're trying to do. Um, so people use PR for a lot of different things, okay? So some people would say, I only care about PR for the uh, purpose of driving traffic. Some people uh, in the SEO community say, I only care about PR for the purpose of building good uh, authoritative links to my website. Mm -hmm. Some people say, I only care about PR for building social proof to my product so that you can say as seen on, mm -hmm. you know, this and that. Some people say, I only care about getting PR because it's going to lead to more PR. Uh, and some people think, I only care about PR because there's these intangible things. It's more likely that I may hire someone. It's more likely that I could get an investor. It's more likely that I could get a partner. So measuring it kind of depends on your your objective and, and trying to understand what you're what you're trying to do, what your end goal is. And sometimes it's it's a combination of those things. And quite honestly, it is a little bit difficult to manage or, or to to measure if you're doing a few different uh, things like that. So set an exact goal. Um, and what about, like you said, I only want PR to get more PR. Do you think press has a domino effect to it? Do you think, you know, so-and-so sees it and then you're going to be in a bunch and bunch? Or is it always the same amount of effort you put into it each time? It, without question, it snowballs. Um, it snowballs for a few different reasons. One of it is just that when someone looks at your website uh, and you have a press page that is very deep and has, um, you know, quality uh, shows or, or publications on it, it gives you more credibility. So the, the journalist or the radio host or, or the podcast host um, is taking less of a risk on someone who's mm -hmm. done this before and has demonstrated credibility by other, uh, other media outlets. Um, you know, so that's kind of the big, that's like a big thing. The other thing is that um, you get better. You know, you you get better at answering questions. You get better at giving uh, soundbite quotes. You you get better at it, and um, you also you get better at crafting your message and talking about, hey, you know, uh, when I was on that show, I just sort of rambled and I didn't really make any coherent thoughts or may have a. You're coherent not rambling, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but the the reason I'm I may not be rambling is because I've done this a few times, um, and so you have to get out there and do it, you know, before you get good at it. Great answers, I love that. Um, so, before I let you go, really quick, tell us where we can find you at online, and if you have anything you want to tell everybody about. 
Of course. So uh, online, you know, you can you can reach us at Bite Size PR. That's our our website, bitesizepr.com. Uh, I'm very accessible um, on Twitter. You can reach me at just at Ryan Evans. Um, and uh, also my email, my direct email is just ryan at bitesizepr.com. Happy to answer any questions. I am. Uh, I love talking to people. I run a business. I get the struggles. I, I love talking about ideas. So uh, I try to be as open as, as possible uh, to folks. So if you have any questions or, or want to reach out, please do. Thank you so much for answering all of these questions, these small businesses, invaluable information. So thank you so much. Great. Thank you so much. And um, for those of you watching, I'll have all of these links that Ryan mentioned on the show notes tomorrow. So be sure to check out uh, smallbusinessesdobetter.com if you're watching this not live. Um, and I want to talk about the product that we're featuring this week. Um, let me get it up in the background. And I'm excited by this because this is another small business who has grown and um, they're like us, but they're helping other small businesses. Um, so this week's product that I'm featuring is Vertical Response. And Vertical Response provides email, social event, survey marketing for your growing business. And um, because I don't have a tangible product, I made a bunch of screenshots like, like what you see here. Um, so vertical response, I personally use them for the small businesses do it better emails. And um, these screenshots, I'm gonna run you through it really quick because they have a, a bunch of incredible features that makes email marketing fast, easy, and efficient. So this image right here, this is the Insta email template machine. What you do is you type in your domain name and click start, it scans your website and it asks you what kind of layout you want. So you choose a layout. After you choose a layout, um, when you submit your website, it scans it. It brings up all the colors of your website and the images from your website. So you don't have to upload anything. And then as you can see on the right, as you're working through it, it updates it live for you so you can see exactly what the template's gonna look like and just makes it really easy and fast. They also have um, the email wizard, which if you don't want to take it directly from your website, if you want to use a predetermined template, you can do that as well. Um, that's the email wizard. And there's a ton of templates to choose from. And I like that they have the new templates right there in front of you. Um, so here's one of the views. This is the block edit. Um, so it's like um, editing a Word doc. You just you can drag and drop new modules in there and change the layout. This feature that I'm showing you right now is the social feature, which a lot of email marketing platforms do not have. So with their social tool, you can schedule Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn posts in advance and respond to comments straight from your vertical response account. Their uh, social media platform also provides metrics on reach and engagements to determine the success of your individual posts for each of your networks. And this shot here, they also provide webinars to help you learn how to do this and to get the most out of your email marketing, your surveys, your events, and all of your social information. So um, not only do they provide the tools, but they teach you how to use them, how to continue to learn from them, and how to most benefit from all of them. So you can check out Vertical Response right here, um, verticalresponse.com. And again, I'll have the um, links in the show notes. Very easy to use, user-friendly. Um, and again, verticalresponse.com. So um, Ryan is in the chat right now if you guys have any more questions for him. So thanks again, Ryan. That was excellent information. Um, Next week's show is going to be super exciting on a geek level. Um, for those of you who have products, I'm sure you've heard of this uh, website before, quirky.com. I'm going to have Stephen Shaw, who's the head of community at Quirky. They, um, last week, they were on Jay Leno. They were on Jay Leno a couple weeks before that. So I'm wondering if it's going to be some sort of regular thing at this point. Um, but what they do is they help get your products out there. So I think they have three new products a week that they help build and manufacture and sell on your website. And the inventors, the small business owners, get a piece of this, but Quirky does all the work for them. So it's a great way to get your products sold without having to work with manufacturing and engineering and all that stuff that takes a really long time. 
Um, so thank you all of you for watching and for asking your great questions. Um, you can watch the show on smallbusinessesdoitbetter.com or catch it live every Tuesday at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. And if you are watching, please leave us a review in iTunes. There's a link on our toolbar. You don't have to write anything. You can just click some stars, but it does make a big difference. So thanks everyone for watching and we will see you next week.